Hello, thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at the Blue Max chainsaw. This is a 22 inch uh, bar chainsaw, uh, a little bit bigger than uh, what I've uh, normally used. Uh, we've had a very large tree that has fell in our yard here. It's like a hundred foot long pine tree. So we need to section this up and to remove it from the yard. And uh, currently I just had a 16 inch chainsaw. It just wasn't going to do the job. So we've got the uh, Blue Max here. I thought it was reasonably priced at $200 with tax. I think it was $219. And today I'm just going to be uh, putting this uh, blade, uh, the chain blade on, as well as going over some of the instructions, so you'll be able to see some close-ups of the saw. And I will be giving a uh, first-time start of the saw, so if you're interested, stay tuned. Here's a look at the Blue Max chainsaw, still in the box. We received this uh, from the Home Depot site. Uh, came in about three or four days. Box has some damage to it. Did have some reinforcement straps, two of those. I just cut those off. Uh, but yeah, there is some damage as you can see here. I don't think it's going to affect the saw itself. Again, it is the 22 inch bar, 57 cc. Engine displacement, actually 56.5 cc, bar length 22 inch, idle speed, 3,000 RPMs, uh, max speed with cutting equipment, 11,000 RPMs, anti-vibration function, chain brake, auto chain lubrication. So everything looks packaged well here. And organized like a fuel mixing canister here. chain got the sheath here whatever that's called protect the chain once it's on the bar plastic it's not too heavy it's a good looking saw Uh, let's see, we got a booklet here. Here's the bar. Let's see how long it is. I mean, I know it's 22, but how long is that actually? That's pretty, that's pretty long. So I've got everything laid out before me here. I've got the saw, I've got the uh, guide bar here, chain, instruction, manual. I've got the uh, hardware, really not any hardware other than a couple of screws. Uh, the multi tool here and this is a sharpening uh, file here sharpen the blade I guess when it's uh, when it's dull um, this is called a spiked bumper here two screws to put that on now you want to follow your instructions here as closely as possible I'm going to try to do that myself and I don't see instructions for putting on that spiked bumper but I see the two screws there and I see a picture that shows it uh, on here. Here's uh, instructions on putting the uh, chain and guide bar on. Here is that uh, spiked bumper I just sh I was talking about and I haven't put it on yet. I was hoping to but I got to take the cover off first so that will be the first thing that uh, that we do. So we'll pull the uh, hand guard back all the way which it is. It's already locked in closest to the handle here to get the uh, cover off here I'm going to use the wrench here and I can actually do this with my fingers I guess and just take these two nuts off of the cover back of it all right now I'll put that spiked bumper on follow that up with the two screws okay spike bumper is on went on well I'm going to take the uh, guide bar remove that from the package here make sure that the print is upright 
you see here. Make sure that symbol is on the end there. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it behind this clutch right here. Putting the two uh, screws in the slot there and just kind of resting it there. Behind the clutch is the sprocket. So we'll be putting a chain around that sprocket a little bit later. So I'm just resting it like that. Now I'm going to get the chain out. I need to make sure that I've got the uh, right direction. Okay, so that's where this comes in handy at right here. You want to just follow that, put that direction on the bar. So that would be like... Alright, so here's what we're going for. See, uh, see how it looks similar to the, the little picture right there? That's how we're the direction we're going on, so I'm going to put the chain on. I'll use two hands to do that. So I'm going to put this on from the back here under the clutch around the sprocket. And just feed it into the little grooves here inside the uh, guide bar. Okay, right now the bar is pushed all the way down. It's far down as it, you know, it's just resting behind this clutch. So uh, once I get the chain on, I'm going to pull it to the right here, out. So I'm going to pull it out to the right. Making sure that uh, we're in the slots here of the bar. Making sure that the uh, chain is on the sprocket, which is uh, behind the uh, clutch here. Top looks good. And once everything is in place again, you know, pull the bar up or to the right, which is what I've done already. Uh, we can look at the symbol here and make sure that. You know, it looks like this, the direction of the saw is going like it should. Okay, so now we can put this uh, cover back on. I'll just be putting the holes over these screws here. But there is a uh, tensioner pin right here that has to line up with the hole right here. Those go over. The pin has to go in that hole right there. And if it doesn't, which it's kind of hitting, I need to take the tool here and I need to adjust it until it will line up. So in this case, I'll be turning it counterclockwise. All right, there, it just fell in place. So now I can put the screws back on. Or I'm sorry, the uh, the nuts here. There are no washers. They have one that's built on already. And I'll tighten it down by hand, and that's just about as tight as I'll need it for now. So to secure the chain, it is on loosely. I've pulled it out as far as I can. So now I'm going to work on the tensioner screw here. I've got my multi uh, tool here. I'm just going to tighten it clockwise and I'm going to hold the bar up like this. And I'm looking at the bottom of the bar or the chain. I want that to uh, move flush into the, 
to the bar there. Okay, so I think I'm looking pretty good here. So now I'm going to go ahead and tighten these retaining nuts here. And I'm just using my multi-tool to do that. Okay, that may be a little too tight. Ah, actually, it may be okay. Uh, let me show you what they say about checking how tight the chain should be or the tension. Uh, lift up the tip of the guide bar and tighten the retaining nuts. That's the last thing that we did. Pull the chainsaw along the top of the guard guide bar by hand from one end to the other, which is what I was doing. And it seemed, you really want to make sure you wear gloves to that, it seemed a little tight, but I was able to do it as you saw. Um, the chain should feel tight, but, sh but still move freely. Tension test, check the chain tension using one hand to lift the chainsaw against the weight of the product. The correct chain tension is achieved when the saw can be lifted by approximately two to four millimeters. I guess that's millimeter or micrometer uh, from the guide bar in the center. So that's what it would look like, two to four millimeters from the middle and that would be by just taking my hand in the center pulling up the weight of the saw and it should be about two to four millimeters here from the guide bar and that is about three so we should be good okay I feel pretty good about this so I'm going to move on now and add oil chain oil to the saw yeah, use oil 10W30 all year round or 30, 40 in summer and stay 20 in winter. So we'll fill up uh, this up with uh, oil until we have about 5 millimeters uh, between the bottom of the cap and the lid here. Okay, then I'll put the lid back on once my oil is in there, of course, and uh, let me show you what they uh, say to do when you want to test and see if, uh, how the oil delivery is working on it. So make sure the chain guide and saw bar are in place when you check the oil delivery. Start the engine, keep it running at medium power, and check if the chain oil is delivering as shown in figure 15 so you know up against uh, a surface I can see a stump there they have um, just look for oil coming out of the tip there turn the adjustment screw of the oil on the bottom of the product to adjust the chain oil flow okay using a uh, flat screwdriver so we're gonna flip it over here and I'm looking for uh, where to adjust the oil the chain oil so I, it says chain oil max minimum um, that's not it right there there's no way to get to it so 
I believe it has to be this little adjustment screw right here. You see the chain right here. That's the clutch. Then on this side, of, you know, you, that's where you adjust the chain at. So right there, I believe, and I'll be testing it later, but uh, that should be it right there. Adding chain oil. Just took the uh, lid off here. Just going to fill that up and leave about five millimeters between the bottom of the cap. And the top of the reservoir here. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to see this. So here we are with the uh, oil in. And I should have about five millimeters between bottom and the uh, oil level. And here's a little reminder of that right here. So uh, we should be good. Time to add the gas. Uh, again, this is gasoline and oil mix 40 to 1. Take this whole thing out. All right, so I'm going to try to start Blue Max for the first time here, and I'm just following my instructions uh, best of my ability. So if you have one of these, um, that's what you should do as well. Just go to your instruction manual. But uh, my understanding is to make sure this chain guard is locked. That's uh, meaning it's in the out position. Uh, that's going to lock the bar or the chain from moving while we start it. Uh, to begin starting, I'm going to pull this uh, out. That's the choke lever that's going to uh, close the choke. There's a little toggle switch over here that is the kill switch. I'm going to lift that up uh, to start it. I'm just going to pull the cord here about six times or until I hear the engine pop uh, wanting to start. When I hear that, then I'm going to push it in the open position and continue pulling the cord until it starts. So let's go ahead and put it in the uh, closed position there. I'll be putting my hand, left hand here, uh, foot here. Gonna give it about, well, until we hear that pop. That was it right there. Let's go ahead and push it in. That was. Alright, so it's idling here. I'm letting it idle for about 30 seconds. Push it in to start it. I'm just going to leave it there to run it. Um, to start the stall, I'll be pulling the chain brake back. Pushing my palm down here. Pulling the trigger. That will uh, allow the uh, chain to move. So that was the first start for uh, Blue Max here. Um, again, let's kind of go back over it. Uh, so to start it, I pulled out the choke here all the way. Had the switch in the on position here. Um, chain brake was on, pushed forward. 
and uh, pull the cord it says about six times uh, you should hear the engine want to start and when you as soon as you hear that then you push your uh, lever here in choke is in the on position the saw continued to run it started you know it was idling but if it starts to die you can pull it out you know to what kind of levels off but eventually the run position will be in like that um, and then when you want to uh, uh, start the saw the chain you, know, you can pick it up one hand here one hand here um, you know you can push this palm lever here and then pull the trigger same time uh, before you do that though you're going to have to release the brake by pulling it forward like that but uh, yeah it runs pretty good runs sounds pretty good it was kind of smoking but I think that's just you know that has to be because it's new um, chains not too tight I double checked that also uh, to turn it off um, you know, should probably put the chain brake I think it says put the chain brake on and then just push the toggle switch down like that and it should you know kill the, the engine so uh, that's it for uh, starting Blue Max first time